Finally, with another YouTube video, it's been a long time coming. Uh, what has it been like? Almost a year and a half since I've actually uh, did my last little video explaining when I wrecked my car and stuff. But we're back again with another video, and uh, we've already done this video once, but we're gonna do it again. A little bit, a uh, little more revamped, a little bit more explanation this time behind uh, my options here. And uh, Last video, you know, kind of got some hate. Uh, I got a lot of love, but it also got some hate, too. I want to kind of go over, you know, some things I've learned since then. Uh, some things have changed. Uh, you know, maybe not have, like, such, you know, what people would call stupid reasons this time. Uh, and, you know, maybe it's more things people can relate to. So we did another five things I hate about my car video. Um, as you guys already know, I own a 2017 Toyota 86. changing it up this time I got a uh, five new things I hate about my car which you know first off let me clarify I don't hate this I okay take this with a grain of salt but necessarily I do not hate anything about this car okay I love almost everything about it you know, there's a couple things you know, I, don't, I don't like too much but uh, you know we're about to get into that so starting off with number one uh, it would have to be the torque dip these things are notorious famous or their loss of torque. Dip, there's just this spot in the rev band, you know, where the car reaches right around 4,000 RPM and it just falls flat on its nose. You know, it's just, it's got no ass, it doesn't have, it has no go, you know, if you're gonna be late for everything you could imagine. Now, it's not necessarily due to the low power. The car only makes 200 base horsepower, which, you know, to the wheels, it's probably only put out about 140, 150. You know, it's, it's not magnificent. But, if you can fix the torque, the car feels like a whole, you know, complete different animal. Not that it's, you know, an animal to begin with, but you know what I'm saying. But there is a fix for that, and I've already taken care of it. I have an open flash tablet now. Uh, nifty little thing, the car was running on E85. I actually switched it out last winter to 93 because uh, I didn't want to leave it sit over winter in the garage and, you know, sit with E85 in the tank and the lines and all that. So I wanted to kind of clean it out, put some 93 in it, you know, you know, freshen it up for, uh, I guess you could say winterize the vehicle. Uh, I haven't driven the car that much at all this year. It is now September 10th. I put a quarter tank of gas in the car before winter time of last year, which would have been around this time. <laughs> and so I sat in the garage for almost a whole year. I've run a quarter tank of 93. And so I put a quarter tank of 93 in, flushed out the E85, retuned it for 93. It's only on a stage one tune right now, and I think I got about halfway to go before I'm gonna eat again. <laughs> so that explains, you know, how much the car has been driven this year. So once we get that 93 out, we'll throw the 85 back in, and it'll feel good again. The torque dip will be gone. Uh, the thing is now, even with a tune on 93, I still notice the torque dip in the 4,000 RPM range. Uh, I don't think that's completely fixed until I do put the 85 back in and tune it on a stage two tune. That's when the car ran at its best, it was when it felt good, and that's when we had a lot of fun. But, uh, you know, number one, torque dip, that's a giveaway. Everyone's going to say that because it is notorious, and it's the first thing anyone dislikes about this platform. Number two is a personal uh, situation for me. Uh, not many people are going to have this issue. I'm going to clarify that up because I put a, you know, last video I made 
Uh, there were some issues there I had that no one else is going to have. Uh, you know, and a lot of people didn't like that. But, you know, take this with a grain of salt. This is my opinion. This is what I dislike about my own car, not the platform necessarily. Uh, but this does, you know, apply to all of this platform. At least, I guess, for my year. Some of these, you know, you have the option to turn on and off. But in my car specifically, I do not have an option to turn off the passenger side airbag. And I believe how it works is... Uh, it's not ran by weight. There, there's a sensor or something there because it, it can pick up on cell phone. Anything magnetic, you know, it picks up on that and tells you, you know, hey, there's a person sitting here. I'm going to turn on the airbag, you know, so everything's safe. Me, I have kids. Uh, I like to go pick my daughter up from school in the car and I have no way to turn off the airbag and I do not feel comfortable with putting her in the front seat. You know, if something would happen, I get another accident again. This thing falls like a Pringle can. Airbags go off, you know could hurt her or worse. And I, I'm not, you know, willing to take that risk. So for now, I put her in the back seat and she has no room back there. I mean, she's only six years old, but uh, she she's big enough to fit in the front seat. I'm comfortable with her in the front seat, but without that airbag, I'm just not taking that chance until she's a little bit bigger. But, uh, you know, number two, pretty simple one. Uh, only a problem that I'm probably gonna have. Maybe a few of you can relate as well. And then we have number three, which is, uh, it's, it wasn't necessarily a problem till now. Maybe I've just kind of, you know, I wouldn't necessarily say got used to it because I still have a lot of fun in this car with what it has now. But 200 base horsepower is pretty low, a 205 necessarily with the upgrades they hit in 2017. Uh, you know, it got the different intake manifold, which I guess added five more horsepower. But here's where the problem lies. It, I'm not saying this needs to be a 300 horsepower, 310 you know, horsepower car, nothing like that. But a, a sweet spot for this, you know, for the price range, for what it is, for how people want to drive this car, you know, straight from the factory, 250 horsepower, I believe, would be the sweet spot. If I could go out right now and buy a Civic Si turbocharged at 205 horsepower, I mean, granted, it's turbocharged, so like, you know, we kind of already have one up because they're getting their extra horsepower from forced induction, you know, where the boxer engine's already making 200 horsepower, uh, you know, just naturally aspirated. But if I can go out and buy a Civic with 205 horsepower, I mean, you do have front wheel drive versus fun wheel drive, which, you know, I'm obviously going to pick the funner option. But, you know, still, like, I don't, I don't know exactly what costs are right now. You know, let's, let's look it up. All right, so for the same price, I could have a Civic Si pretty much. You know, they're right around in the same price range, around $25,000, uh, you know, retail. So I could have a fun forced induction car that, you know, is fun in a straight line. Or I could have a naturally aspirated car, which I chose, that has fun everywhere, but I don't get cool turbo noises. Something to think about. It doesn't really bother me too much. The car is going to get forced induction here soon. And that power, you know, problem is going to be completely eliminated. Uh, you know, I used to autocross the car and the power has never really been, you know, a thing for me to be like, hey, this is a problem. You know, these, this car should be more powerful. Until recently, I don't know, maybe it's just because I'm getting older and I'm not racing it anymore. I'm just kind of driving around, you know, I'm taking it for the Sunday cruise and I'm just, I put my foot down and there's nothing there. And I put my foot down and I'm just kind of like, you know, I want something there. You know, I, I want to hear that turbo suck it in air or I just want to you know, get thrown back in my seat. So, you know, that's, that's a common issue with these. Everyone knows they don't have much power, but everyone also knows you're supposed to drive the car a certain way and you can have fun with the car with the lack of power it already has from factory. 200 horsepower is plenty enough. Uh, maybe just with my midlife crisis I'm going through, it's just not enough for me anymore. But we're getting on the number four now, which is another personal preference for me in my car in particular. This isn't going to apply to everybody else, but back in... What was it 20 I think it was 2018 right maybe it was yeah it was 2018 I believe yeah yeah <laughs> sorry I'm just man it's been a while <laughs> uh, 2018 the car was hit head-on uh, that's what I made the last video about and it's it's restored to perfection I mean there's there's no problem with the car but just knowing that it was in an, in an accident still haunts me 
uh, the car still has a clean title, you know, everything like that. But, you know, it's always going to have that, oh, one incident report. And it, just, it bothers me. It may not bother everyone else. But just knowing that the car wasn't an accident and it's not that pristine, innocent, you know, vehicle I built beforehand, it's, it affects me a little bit. You know, it's, I don't think it's enough to affect resale value. Not that I plan on ever reselling the car. You know, but it's something that just kind of like haunts me and I still remember that day. And there's just, I've noticed since then, there's just been a loss of attachment, you can say. Uh, I'm not so eager to add new things or work on it anymore. I rarely ever drive it. That's also plays into the part that I have a family now. There's kids involved. You know, I have a lot of other things that's taken over in my life that I just can't get out and drive as much as I'd like to. But there is still, you know, like I said, in my mind, I always think about that. I think back to that day and the accident and it lingers in there and it's always going to be a problem, I believe, as long as I own the car, which, you know, hopefully I own the car for a very long time. But moving on to number five and the last bit of information here of the fifth thing I hate about my car, which this may pertain to more of you, this may not be just me, but it's 2017. This was the very first model of the 86 in the United States. Um, I was very eager to get the car. I was like, oh, you know, I'm gonna be the first one to rock a bunny and I'm gonna get this car. I'm gonna be the first wide body in the States, you know, uh, in the world. And I get it, we, you know, and within a couple months, all the parts are on, it's ready to go. You know, I'm rocking the rocket bunny. And it was cool. And then, you know, next year rolls around, the 2018s come out, you got the 860s releasing. And they all have these cool features that mine don't have. You know, mine's basically a base model. When it came out, it was top of the line, you know? <laughs> but now it's basically a base model and all these new ones, you know, have these cool little gadgets in the cluster. You know, you got your BRZ, you know, limited edition uh, knobs and everything in the center. Uh, everything just looks more crisp. You got your push to start. You got your Brimbo brake packages, you know, you got all that cool stuff that, you know, if I would have just waited a little bit longer and wasn't so eager to jump the gun, I'd have that too, you know. But not a super big issue, just in a, another little pet peeve I guess I have because, you know, every time I get something, I, I want to have, you know, the best thing that I could possibly get. And as of now, you know, it's kind of outdated. It's three years old. Uh, all this new stuff's coming out. You know, 2021, I think they're even talking about going you know, forced induction with these cars. You know, so that's what I get for not waiting it out. But at the same time, you know, I'm very happy with my purchase. I'm very happy with what I did. I'm very happy with the build in general. And overall, I'm content. You know, I couldn't say, uh, I couldn't be happier with the car. Uh, you know, it's very hard to pick out five things I hate in particular. This time it was a little bit easier. You know, we're seasoned. I've had the car for three years, you know, I kind of know in and outs, uh, little things. There's there's other little things I dislike and other things I like, uh, but I'm not going to go into detail about those because it's going to pertain to me only. I don't think anyone else is going to relate to that, you know, with the modifications I've added and, you know, this and that. Uh, so if you'd like to see another video, you know, maybe five things I hate about going wide body, you know, uh, let me know if, you know, I, I really want to get back into the YouTube scene. If there's anything in particular anyone would like to know, questions, don't don't hesitate to ask in the comments. Be more than happy to uh, answer those for you. Feels good to be back. Feels good to be making videos again. I hope you enjoyed the little cinematic edits and seeing the car again. Uh, you know, kind of a garage update and where we're going here. I appreciate you all stopping by to watch the video. As always, thank you guys. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Hey, and I be chillin' with the gang Break it down, roll me up a little Mary Jane Double cut, sip and take it straight to the brain Yeah, my ego big, give a fuck what you think I got what you want, I got anything you need Breaking up the bread and I split it with the team Take it back when all that shit was only just a dream now